Hi everyone, it's Cricket Barrientos with Sounds of Autism, and I'm here with Keelan and Rebecca to talk about sex trafficking is real, uh, recognizing the signs, spectrum, talks, and tips. Hello girls, how are you tonight? Good, how are you? Good. So we're going to start out with you, Rebecca. We're going to ask a little bit. Um, we, we would like to know a little bit about the agency that you work for and how you support those who have been trafficked. Great. So I we are starting a nonprofit, a legal nonprofit called the Charleston Law and Advocacy Center. It is named after Rebecca Charleston. She is just an amazing survivor of trafficking, doing a lot of amazing work now um, in her, you know, healing and restoration. And she is um, one of the leaders of our uh, she of our pro program. And we are really happy to have her on board. So what we do is we exist to fight for justice, defend dignity, and demand accountability. So Nevada, the, the whole thing about this is Nevada will no longer be a safe haven and Mecca for sex buyers. So we are located in Nevada. We're just starting out. This could definitely be multi-jurisdictional um, in the future. But right now, the law firm is in Nevada, and um, that's where we are. So those actively being exploited will know they're not alone and that we exist to provide them with services and alternatives to lives filled with oppression and exploitation. And so nonprofits across the state um, will be better able to serve their clients in ethical trauma informed ways to help reduce overall victimization across the state. Nevada will no longer be a leader in the country of trafficking to victims, domestic violence, homicides, sexual assaults and otherwise adverse treatment of women and girls. We envision laws being changed so that victims are no longer prosecuted for crimes their abusers force them into. And instead, sex buyers, traffickers, and brothel owners, the true drivers behind sexual exploitation, will be prosecuted for their commodification of most marginalized individuals on the fringes of society. While pro bono legal services do not solve every problem, together with our nonprofit partners, we're going to help end sex trafficking and sexual exploitation in Nevada. I love so our, that. Yeah, so uh, we have a few values that we like to go by. So one, um, authenticity. Our, our, our goal is just to be authentic with the people we serve and just to be real and true with them. So we have rigorous commitments to transparency. Um, we have a fearless, we're fearless, fearless in excellence and never compromising. We honor respecting people's agency and dignity. So a lot of time when we take in survivors, um, they're in charge. We're not gonna do anything. We're not gonna go through with prosecution if our survivors are not wanting to do that, are not ready to do that. Is And it's not part of their healing journey that they want at that time, we're gonna respect that. Um, also, we offer a lot of humility and teachability in how we serve. We wanna be trauma-informed attorneys. And so that's what you're gonna get with the Charleston Law, uh, Law Center. That's great. And the work that you guys are doing is amazing. I know you're in Nevada. Um, Rebecca, do you guys ever plan on going national so that there's other, um, you know, places that you can be doing this? Because we know that sex trafficking is huge and it's all over the United States and all over the world. But the United States is our focus right now. And um, I know that you have your agency in Nevada, but I believe there's some other like satellite um, agencies too, right? Um, so right now we're just in Nevada, but it, it's our dream to actually, yeah, expand to other jurisdictions. Um, uh, Rebecca Charleston is actually um, in Texas, so we, we'd love to start a branch out there in the future, perhaps. Um, I mean, we're just getting off the ground. We launch in uh, officially in January. We're doing the work right now, but we officially get to put it under our nonprofit umbrella in January. So yeah, we want to be multi-jurisdictional in the future um, as we see this grow. And we want to be, um, this is we want to be like kind of like the shell of like we want other agencies to do what we're doing across the nation we want to be able to be that like that bridge it's like let's look at what charleston law center is doing we want that here and we want to be able to help other agencies across the nation and even across the world do what we're doing with our model we want to have we want our mo we want to see our model um as it works extended uh, to multiple jurisdictions that's awesome. Thank you so much. And then Keelan, I know you and Rebecca have had, um, you kind of grew up in your college world, right? The, the life of college. And then you guys both, um, am I correct on it? I, I want to make sure that I'm right on, on the relationship between you and Rebecca. 
High school. High school. High school. Okay. Yeah. So you guys were in high school together and you knew each other. What, what I love about this is, is um, you're very similar with, with the way we do our, our organization, our agency. We have grown over the last 11 years. We've gone slow and methodical, and we've really tried to find the best solutions um, to support the autism population. And when I met with both of you, I explained to you that I had a concern because the autism population has a delay in processing. And so a lot of times they are a great group to be lured into these bad situations, online gaming, uh, being out in the community, being a part of the community and our our goal is to integrate them back into society, but you can't do that if you don't have a safe platform. So with what Rebecca's agency is doing and, the, and bringing the awareness and all the different groups that we work with, you know, it's super important. But what you do, Keelan, is you actually work with people uh, on the educational component to bring awareness to this so that we keep people safe. So I would like you to speak on that a little bit, if you don't mind. Yeah. So actually, Rebecca and I started a blog probably about um, three years ago. So it's called See the Revival. So it stands for Sexual Exploitation Education. The revival, because the revival we want to see is sexual exploitation to be extinct and gone forever. Um, so we started it just to educate people within our Chicagoland area at the time, because a lot of the times when people think about human trafficking, sex trafficking, like work slaves, they think, oh, a third world problem, that doesn't happen here, when truly it happens right under our noses. And it's way more common, um, sad to say, within the U.S. and big cities within the U.S. as well than like what people would ever think. So we started our blog um, just as a very broad umbrella to cover all sexual exploitation cases, but we focused a lot on um, pornography, how to be safe online, how to um, have certain blockers on your computers as parents so that kids and creepers can't come on there and contact your student or your kids. Um, I'm a teacher, so we've come up with a curriculum that schools can use and teachers can use to implement and um, teach this appropriately within the classroom. And then also a curriculum that teachers can use to educate parents and have parents even come in and hear about this because a lot of parents don't know. They don't even really know how to use the technology their kids are talking about. They don't know what it is. Um, what it requires and like that they're able to chat with anyone online truly just with a couple clicks of their buttons so that's our overall goal is to kind of take that initial first step from even happening to protect the kids at homes on their computers before they're even pushed out into um the world where creepers and um uh, predators can even come and have the opportunity to contact them. But then we also do talk about issues um, like legalizing prostitution, what that does and how that increases the sex trafficking rates um, within that area. We talk about issues that are going on around the world with any type of sexual exploitation. Um, we're going to start talking about the um, sex education that is being implemented within schools and actually how that is going to have a negative effect on um, the child's sexual desires and um, what is appropriate and what is not for them to hear at certain ages and how to combat that um, and what parents should be aware of and that they should know what's within their curriculum. So truly it is a strictly educational um, platform. Like that is our main push and our main focus. Now, you ladies have both worked with people that have been sex trafficked, and if I could ask you, you know, what is one thing that you feel is the main, you know, like negative cause for this to happen, I think we talked about this the last time where you guys were like, you need to know what your child's doing on their phone. Like you need to know their passwords and you got to be looking and checking them out and making sure that they're being completely honest with you. Because a lot of times, especially when they're going through puberty and teenage years and things like that, they become very distant. And a lot of that is just natural. It's natural for us to be teenagers and natural for us to, you know, not tell mom and dad everything. We want our independence. But we have to make sure that these kids, like I, I scared my kids. I told them all kinds of things that could happen. I made them watch movies and videos and things that they didn't want to watch. But I did that because I knew if I didn't, they would be unaware. And now Lexi's like, I might be a little 
over the top with this guy, but he made me uncomfortable. And, you know, she, she calls us for every little thing. And I'm like, I don't care. You can call me every night. I don't care. I want to hear from you. And I don't care that you're 22 years old. If somebody's making you uncomfortable, you need to go with your instincts and you have to, you know, really go with that. And a lot of times, as I said, with the autism population, because they have a delay in processing, their instincts don't kick in until it's too late. And we've already had multiple kids lured out of their homes from online gaming and all these different things, their phones. And these predators, they have a an entire like thing set up. They know exactly how to get them out of the home, get them into an Uber car and get them to wherever they need to go to get them transported to where they're going to be going. And what happens when those kids end up in the place they're going to be going you would never want your child to go through that. And that's what we're trying to bring awareness to. So knowing all of those things, is there anything that you would like to give as a tip uh, to the parents just to make sure that they continue to keep their child safe? For, yeah, I think, you know, predators are going to prey on vulnerability and especially in the autism, you know, uh, population and even middle schoolers, boys, especially girls, I, I think self-esteem um, is such a huge vulnerability uh, where older predators that they know how to prey on that. They know how to prey on that vulnerability. They know that child is looking for love and acceptance and, and admiration. And, and so they're going to prey on that and they're going to exploit that. And I think that's one of the easiest things for them to exploit. So really just building your child up, especially if you have young children, just build them up like make sure they know who they are, make sure they know that they're, they're incredible, that if, you know, you're a Christian, that they're children of God, that, you know, they are beautiful and that all these things. So make sure that they are built up um, and they have that sense of security and that sense of, I know who I am. So it's going to be a lot harder for an exploiter to try to manipulate a child who is firm in who they are um, versus a child who is just looking for, for love and attention in any way they can get it. Mm -hmm. Very good advice. And what about you, Keelan? Any kind of tip or something that you could bring to the forefront for the parents? Yeah, I agree, Rebecca. That's probably one of the biggest foundations. But then also um, knowing who your kids are hanging out with, who they're talking to, educating yourself on what they're doing on their devices. Mm -hmm. um, if you're, if you feel like you can't, for some reason, put blockers on, at least researching, like, what are these apps they're on? What do they consist of? Um, being involved with your school, your, your kid's school, knowing what they're being taught there, who they're hanging out with there. Um, do they go somewhere after school every day? Do they get there early? Like, what are they doing? Just knowing about your kid, you're not invading their privacy. Um, if anything, you're just making sure that they're safe because even if they do have instincts, when you're, when you're young, you don't listen to them and you don't know. You don't know. So in remembering that they are kids, like these are children, just because they're sassy and they can drive a car does not mean they're not a child. Like that is still a legal child. So you need to take precautions like they are one. I love it. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate your time today. And we will be continuing in December and we'll be talking a little bit about a little bit more about the foundation of your agency, uh, Rebecca, and where this is going to go. Um, we are working with Project um, uh, Search out here as well in Arizona uh, to help bring awareness. And um, we have um, Shauna on here once in a while talking about that. Um, and then anti-predatorial um, Trent, he's been very busy, a lot of caseload, um, but I reached out to him the other day and we talked and he said that um, he's definitely willing to jump on as soon as he can and um, wants to share with us some of the things that he's seeing as a commonality of kids being sex trafficked. He's working over the borders. He's working in these tunnels. He's working with cartels. He's working with a lot of different people. And um, he said that it's just really bad out there. So so thank you, ladies, for what you do. Continue on your mission. I think you're doing a really good job, and we'll see you in December. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.